Hello, this is our second organic chemistry video. It's going to cover functional groups and how to recognize them and how to name them. So I really like this visual. It's from the Brown LeMay text and it covers what all the functional groups are and an example of each of them and um, what the suffix is and the endings. So if you look here for an example, uh, if you see a C double bonded to an oxygen with carbons on either side of it, it's a ketone. The ending of the name is own. So like in this example right here, I've got one, two, three carbons. So we use the prefix prop and this becomes propanone. And so this is a nice summary of what the different functional groups are. How you name things with functional groups is you find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the functional group. And then you think about what the alkane name would be. So like in this example down here, if I have two carbon alkane, I call that ethane. And if I, um, then what I do is I take that alkane name and I remove the E and replace it with the suffix of the functional group. So if it's a two carbon molecule that has an alcohol group attached to it, I call it ethanol. So I replace the E with an OL. Uh, if it's a two carbon aldehyde, you call it ethanol with an AL ending. And if it's a two carbon carboxylic acid, it would be ethanoic acid. So again, you look back to this previous page for what the various endings would be based on your functional group. So is it ain, ene, ein, all, um, amine, al. So you need to know what those various suffixes are and what functional group they go along with. So we'll look at some examples, break it down by the various functional groups. So the first one is alcohols, and these contain what we call hydroxyl groups, which is an O bonded to an H. And again, how you name them is you look at the parent hydrocarbon, look at the alkane name. So like in this example right here, it's a three carbon chain. So the base hydrocarbon would be propane. And I remove the E and change the ending to an OL. So propane becomes propanol. And if there's more than one possible place where that functional group could be located, then use a number to designate the location. And it's the same numbering system that we use when we talk about hydrocarbon naming. So in this example, this is one propanol because my uh, hydroxyl group, my alcohol group, is attached to the first carbon. This one is two propanol. And your numbering system, you start from the end closest to the functional group. In this example, it wouldn't have mattered which side I start on. Notice there is no such thing as 3-propanol because 3-propanol and 1-propanol are the exact same thing. Huh. Just a side note, you can also have several alcohol groups in one molecule, and we call that diol, triol, for example. And there's some other examples down here of interesting alcohols, like cholesterol is something you, I'm sure you've heard of before or glycerol or glycerin, you may have heard it called that. That's a triol where it has um, three alcohol groups. Ethers are basically you have an alkane with an oxygen atom in the middle. So it's like an oxygen atom separating two alkane chains. So this example right there is diethyl ether. And as far as nomenclature goes, there's two possible ways you can name them and either way is fine. The common way of naming them is essentially thinking of this oxygen as your ether part of it. So I'd say, um, okay, I've got an ether here. This is an oxygen separating two hydrocarbon groups. And then I would name my hydrocarbon group separately. So I'd say, okay, this is a two carbon chain. So I'm gonna call that an ethyl group. This is a one carbon chain. So I'm gonna call it a methyl group. So it's ethyl methyl ether. In this example, my ether has two methyls attached to it, so I call it dimethyl ether. So that's one way of naming ethers. There's also the IUPAC way, na name, way of naming them, um, which you can see the example here. In that case, you take the longest carbon chain and take that as your base. So like you could name, look in here at this one again, this would be my base alkyl group. I would call it ethane, and I would say there's a methoxy group attached to it. I personally think this common way of naming it is a little more straightforward, so I might go with that. Okay, so ketones have a C double bonded to an O, and just watch out for these because there are several functional groups that have a C double bonded to an O. It could be a ketone, it could be an aldehyde, or it could be a carboxylic acid. So what 
you'll notice about the ketones is this carbon, um, this right here we call it a carbonyl group, has carbons on either side of it. That's what makes it a ketone and not one of those other functional groups. In an aldehyde, this carbonyl group has a hydrogen attached to that carbon. So basically, a ketone is where you have that C double bond O in the middle of a molecule, right here. An aldehyde is where you have that double bond at the end of a molecule. So there's an H poking off one side. So they're, they're otherwise they're very similar. As far as naming them, if it's a ketone, you change the ending to own. If it's an aldehyde, you change the ending to al. So pentanone or pentanal if it's an aldehyde. And with the ketones, if, if there are different isomers possible and that, that carbonyl group can show up in more than one place, then we need to use a number to specify where that C double bond O is in the molecule. So is it on the second carbon, the third carbon, et cetera. Carboxylic acids, again, we have this carbonyl group, but instead of having carbons on either side of it, there's an OH. So you can think of a carboxylic acid, it almost looks like a ketone and an alcohol kind of combined together. And these are weak acids. There's some examples you've heard of before, like lactic acid, citric acid that's found in citric fruit, citrus fruits, aspirin, um, acetic acid is what's in vinegar. So lots of things that we're familiar with that are carboxylic acids. As far as naming them, again, you take the parent carbon chain and think about what the alkane name would be. So like in this example that we're looking at here, it's a two carbon chain, so it would be ethane, but then I remove the E and replace it with oic acid. And again, if you look back to that table on the very first slide, it has a really good summary of all the different functional groups and the names. And this PowerPoint's up online too, so you can spend more time looking at the individual slides if you would like. Okay. So this would become ethanoic acid. Esters are products of reactions between carboxylics and alcohols, and they're found in a lot of perfumes, so esters tend to smell good. And the way that we name them has to do with, with how you make esters. So you think of part, part of the ester um, comes from the carboxylic acid and part of it comes from the alcohol, and we name those two sides differently. So what I would do is if you're looking at an ester is I would like draw a line down this, this middle oxygen here. And you say one half of it contains a carbonyl group, the other half just has C's and H's. So the side with C's and H's, that's what we call your alkyl group. So it's going to have a YL ending. Um, this one is going to be your O8 group. So in this example, I've got two carbons over here, so it's ethyl. And then this is one carbon, so it's methanoate. If I look at this example right here, um, in this case, my alkyl group is on the right. Um, this is the side that contains my carbonyl group there. So that's the one that I'm going to name with the OH ending. So this becomes methyl ethanoate, because I've got a one carbon alkyl group and a two carbon um, is a carboxylic acid derivative there. That's the one I call it the O8. So again, split this one in half. My one carbon group over here, I'm going to call this methyl. And this is three carbons. So I'm going to say prop, excuse me, um, propanoate. So this becomes methyl propanoate. Over here, my alkyl group has three carbons, so it's propyl. And this has one carbon, methanoate. What you'll notice is we never need the numbering system when we're naming the no, um, esters because the names themselves will basically tell us where that carbonyl group is showing up and how many carbons are on either side of it. Amines, they are molecules that have nitrogens in them. They tend to be weak bases. And as far as naming them, um, we typically just name the alkyl group and put amine at the end. So like if it's one carbon, we call it methylamine, or if it's two carbons, ethylamine, for example. So you send just tack on an amine at the end there. And again, if that amine group can show up on more than one carbon, you need to use the numbering system 
to indicate, to distinguish between your various isomers, so to show where that amine group is showing up. So here you could have um, one propanamine or two propanamine. Sometimes you'll see the number showing up in the middle of the name. I would say it's okay to put the beginning to like one propanamine or propan one amine. Either way is okay. 